Alright folks, so what I wanted to do is a quick video talking about the iLoons HD1 DMR and FM dual band handheld ham or amateur radio. But before I do, why don't you go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. Okay, there's something I want to cover real quick. I was contacted by somebody from Redivis and they asked me if I would be interested in receiving this iLoons HD1 for testing, evaluation, and review purposes, free of charge. Um, of course, I said yes. I like to play around with ham radios. I like DMR, and I like making YouTube videos. So here it is. Uh, big thanks to Redivis for sending this to me. And uh, I did want to talk a little bit about that. So Redivis is the company it's, uh, that makes this radio, which is made in China. Um, it's branded as iLoons. It's my understanding that uh, the iLoons brand will be used for their amateur radio equipment moving forward. And Redivis will be used for more of their commercial gear. I'm not sure how that transition is going to work. The claim is, is that this radio is built from the ground up to be for ham radio operators. Um, what I can tell you is, is that it has a very uh, feature-rich menu system. Um, it seems that you can do almost everything uh, programming from the front panel. The uh, Getting a little bit of a bit error right there. It's not the radio. It's probably my network or, or this person's hotspot. Um, the only thing that I found that, that you can't do through the interface is programming zones. You can add channels to zones, but you can't create new zones. And that just might be a limitation on my part. I've only been playing around with this radio for about two weeks. And uh, what I can tell you is, is that I'm very happy with it. It's been a joy to use. Um, it's been a fantastic radio. I've used it every day. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the things that ship with this radio, the accessories that come with it. I'll include a link below to where you can buy this radio. Uh, it's $189. Now, it's my understanding there's some kits or add-ons that you can get, maybe an extra antenna or an extra battery if you pay a little bit more, or you could get the GPS version. This is the non-GPS version. The GPS version is $199. So what you get in the package is the iLoons HD1 radio itself. Um, it also comes with a 3200 milliamp battery. Uh, this battery is fantastic. It has a very long lifetime. It's probably the best performing battery on any HT that I own. Uh, it comes with this antenna, and we'll talk more about the antenna a little bit later on. The antenna does have a female SMA connector, which means that the male end of the SMA connector, or the pin, is on the radio itself. It's not my preferred uh, system for an antenna, but it's generally the case of radios coming out of China. It comes with this power adapter and it comes with a charger. So you just charge this HT in the cradle like you do many other ones. It comes with a user manual and uh, I didn't even open the user manual and I was able to actually program this uh, radio to talk on a local repeater and I was able to program it to communicate on my hotspot without any, without reading the, the manual. So it kind of tells you a little bit about how easy this thing is to program. Uh, it comes with a belt clip. I have not put those the, that on the radio yet. Uh, I typically don't use belt clips, but sometimes I might. Let's see if I can get a quick zoom in on here. Uh, the belt clip adapters, there you go, are Torx. So you do need a little bit of a different type of uh, tool than a screwdriver to put that on. Not a big deal. comes with a lanyard. I never use lanyards. I just don't have a need for them. They get caught on something. Some people love them, though, but uh, they're not for me. And it also comes with a programming cable, which is pretty good. If you take a look at this programming cable, you'll notice that it has a Motorola type interface. Uh, you take this screw out on the side of the radio and then you just mount that here. Um, the reason it uses that system is, is that this radio is waterproof. I, th I think it's uh, water resistant. You can drop it into a meter of water for up to uh, 30 minutes. So I do want to quickly run through some of the features that come with this radio. As mentioned, it's a dual band DMR radio, so it operates on the 2 meter and 70 centimeter uh, bands. One of the things is, is that the frequencies that you can use this radio on go beyond amateur radio or ham bands, as they're uh, sometimes referred to. Um, so they include like FRS, GMRS, or MERS, and uh, you don't want to transmit on those frequencies. So make sure that you're very careful about how you use this radio, make sure you're a licensed ham radio operator, and make sure you have it programmed correctly. It does analog FM and digital, or uh, what is called DMR. It's compatible with Motorola type uh, tier 1 and Tier 2, and what that means is, is that you can have simplex communications back and forth with other radios, or you can use um, TDMA, which is like a, a uh, slot system, a time slot system that allows you to operate uh, multiple radios on the same frequencies uh, without stepping on each other. 
Now look at that, uh, dual band is listed twice, we're just going to skip that. It uh, holds 100,000 contacts. Now when you talk about these type of contacts, um, they mean different, they, they, they call them different things. Like sometimes they're called local contacts, sometimes they're called digital contacts. I'm just going to call them digital contacts moving forward. Uh, one of the things is that the DMR contact ID database is a little over uh, 115,000, I think, right around there. So you're going to have to make some decisions about how many you import into this radio. Uh, I've done this uh, contact import and I made a video on it, uh, which I can link below. But uh, it's a pretty straightforward process, easy to do. And then it contains or can hold a uh, thousand priority contacts. And priority contacts are what you would consider like a talk group uh, or, or maybe your buddy that you're going to direct dial. 3,000 channels, that sounds like a lot, but in a lot of cases, folks will program a channel for maybe TAC 310 on the local repeater and another channel for TAC 311. Um, that's just what people do. So a lot of times you have a lot of, a lot of channels on there. Uh, it says dual time slot, but I think we cover that under the uh, Tier 2 conversation. Uh, you can update the firmware, uh, and I did a video on that. It was a pretty straightforward process. Uh, I, I can link to that below, but uh, what's nice is, is that Redivis or iLunes makes a lot of adjustments to this radio, and uh, when they do that, maybe they make a modification, maybe it's a bug fix or an enhancement. Um, they release them in versions of firmware. Uh, we covered that it's waterproof. Um, high, medium, low power uh, on UHF, VHF, uh, it's a little bit different, but the highest it goes to is 10 watts, and that is on VHF, uh, 1 watt is the lowest. Um, the other thing I really want to talk about was the uh, color LCD display. Let's see if I can maybe zoom in on this a little bit for that conversation. Um, when you take a look at the display, you can see that it's very bright, and you have these uh, keys on the side that allow you to do different things. But uh, it's easy to read. There's a lot of information, and I like the display. I think it's adequate. Uh, the one thing that you see is that uh, folks will tell you that um, you can't use this display outside, or you can use it, but it's very difficult to read. And, uh, you know, that, that is true. I had to take it outside, and the display was a little bit difficult to read. The other thing I'm going to mention is that it has promiscuous function, um, or promiscuous mode. And what that allows you to do is program a channel, maybe on your uh, local repeater, and you can listen to talk groups other than the talk group that you are currently listening to or is programmed in your channel. So for example, maybe you're listening to a QSO on TAC 310, and somebody comes along on Worldwide and <clears throat> uh, starts, starts having a conversation or a QSO. With promiscuous mode enabled, you should be able to hear that. Um, you can program uh, CT, CSS, and DCS codes uh, for repeaters uh, for when you're using FM analog mode. And it also uses Vox Control. Not a big fan of Vox Control. Uh, typically, we use that uh, for digital stuff like APRS. So let's go ahead and cover everybody's favorite topic, specifications. Uh, here are the exact frequencies, and you can see what I mean when I said that they extend a little bit beyond the ARS or ham bands. Um, it also can receive broadcast FM anywhere from uh, 76 megahertz all the way up to uh, 10795. So you can put on your uh, 106.3 hot hits uh, station and uh, listen to that on this radio if you want. The operating voltage is 7.4 DC, which is pretty typical of these handy talkies. And there's the dimensions uh, in metric. I have no idea what that means. What I can do is a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison in terms of size to everybody's favorite radio, the Baofeng UV5R. Um, so you can see it's a much larger radio. The uh, the case of this feels very hefty, and it's and it's quite heavy uh, compared to something like this. But it doesn't feel heavy to the point of being cumbersome. And I'm going to assume that the bulk of the weight comes from the the rather large battery. Here it is side by side, um, and you can see this fits quite comfortably in the hand. There's no problem uh, manipulating the controls or using this radio single-handed. Although you probably without the lanyard when you when you use two hands when you're doing that. So we talked a little bit about the weight, and the weight is 12.7 uh, ounces. And uh, there's a little bit of drama around the antenna, so we might as well talk about that now. <clears throat> uh, the antenna re impedance is reported at uh, 50 ohms. And there have been some tests, and there have been a lot of conversations on the internet about people having problems with the uh, antenna or with the radio when using third-party antennas, like maybe a Nagoya or a Comet or something like that. Um, 
a lot of there's been a lot of talk, and it's my understanding that's been reported to Redivis, but there's never really been a clear answer on that. I don't know if it was a bad batch of radios. I don't know if it's a hardware problem. It doesn't seem like it's a firmware or software problem to me. Uh, I have not tested the uh, the radio with any antenna other than this one, although I'm planning to do so. I uh, just haven't had a chance to do it yet. And so that's a little bit of a drawback for me is, is that I would like the ability to roll J, use uh, roll-up J-pole antennas um, out in the field. Um, if I can't, it's a little bit of a bummer. But um, iLunes does sell a high-gain antenna that you can add to this. I think it adds 1.6 dB. Um, so, you know, you talk about a 10-watt radio and you add that on there. It's probably pretty good. I don't necessarily know if it's a deal breaker for me. Um, if if that's an issue and, and uh, the testing comes out to the point where I don't believe that this is a 50 ohm setup, then uh, I'll just use the factory antenna that came with it. It's not it's not a big deal for me. It's certainly not it's not a showstopper for me. Um, talking about the power, I did mention so UHF is eight watts on high, four and medium, one on low. VHF is ten, five, and one. <clears throat> So let's take a couple minutes and talk about why I like it. Uh, I feel that it's a reasonably priced radio. For $189, you get a lot of capability. You get a lot of radio. Like I said, I've been using this, uh, able to program it from the from the keypad, which has been uh, quite easy. It's actually been a lot easier than a lot of other radios that uh, that I own. Um, you know, it's you, it's dual band. It's waterproof. Uh, 189 bucks, 10 watts. Uh, it doesn't seem like that's an outrageous price to me. Uh, I'm not going to talk about field programmable, but I feel like I covered that. Same with uh, waterproof. Um, I do like, and I mentioned earlier, the fact that the company does address bugs uh, in a pretty timely manner with uh, firmware updates. Battery life, I couldn't be happier with that. We talked about the uh, the clear screen and uh, great sound. It, it sounds fantastic. About the uh, peanut app there, I actually downloaded that a while back. Does somebody, you have to get a passport or something, or do you use that, uh, the peanut app there you're talking about on the Android? So, um, you know, some improvements that uh, that could be made, and we talked about the contact ID database. Hopefully that's something they can fix with firmware and get that up to about 150000 or so. Um, but the programming cable, I did have a couple of issues. Uh, I'm running Windows 10. It's a 32-bit version of Windows 10, and I believe it's Home Edition. Uh, they say with Windows 10, it's supposed to uh, install the cable driver uh, and work fine. That wasn't the case for me. I did have to install the Win 7 driver. And, uh, you know, the driver is available on the Redivis website, but when I downloaded it, there was uh, very little documentation uh, around how to install the driver and what to do to troubleshoot. Um, also, I have in here CPS Clarity. Uh, I'm, I'm I think I might have mentioned it earlier about the contacts, right? So on the radio, it's called local contacts. Uh, in the CPS, they call it address book contacts. So somebody new to DMR, um, or maybe somebody who's not exactly computer savvy, uh, they might have a little bit of problem with that, and so maybe the language could be cleaned up a little bit. I have improved FM reception. Uh, while I can receive the local repeaters just fine, um, this doesn't have the same reception as like my A2 FT60. Um, you know, is, is that a lot to expect? I don't know, but uh, maybe on two meters specifically, I did notice that the reception could be a little bit better. Oh, here we go. We have consistent language between CPS and radio, and I covered that under CPS Clarity, which we'll go back to, you know, around the CPS Clarity, and I did mention about the documentation and the drivers. There really wasn't much documentation in the CPS uh, software either. So I'm one of those people that, uh, you know, I like to say I don't read the instruction manual, and I didn't for the radio itself, but for things like the software, I, I generally do take a look at it. Um, the last thing, this isn't really that big of a deal to me, is, is that there's a lot of hubbub about direct conversion receivers versus superheterodyne. Um, and the concern being that direct uh, conversion receivers can get overloaded if you have other, uh, like DMR, digital radios broadcasting uh, close by. Um, I've been using DMR for about six months now. It hasn't been an issue for me. Maybe it will be one day, but uh, I, I can live with a direct conversion receiver for sub $200 radio. Anyhow, that's really it, folks. Uh, I do want to say uh, thank you to everybody for watching and listening to me for this long. And a big thanks to uh, Redivis for sending this radio out for review.